Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Welcome to meet my guest. Today we have back by, let's say, popular demand, <laughs> we have Lisa Shea with us, and she is a very uh, likable and well-known author in this area. Lisa is not only an author, but she is also the president of the Blackstone Valley Art Association. And Lisa's going to not only talk about a couple of her new books coming up, but about an exhibit over at the, um, what do you call it, the Book Lovers Gourmet in Webster, an art exhibit. Lisa, welcome. Tell us about the, uh, the exhibit coming up. Well, last year we did a sunflower show because the Book Lovers Gourmet has a beautiful sunflower garden out front of them. And we did so well that we're going to do one this year. So this is one of the sunflower pictures. This is by Ann Wagstaff. But we've got watercolors and oils and acrylics and photography of all sorts of different kinds. Yeah. So it's going to be a month-long celebration and we'll have a reception there as well. Are you an artist as well? Yes, I do photography and painting. I always think of you as an author. You are, so you do photography and what else? Painting. What is your, uh, in painting, what do you prefer, oils, acrylic? Oh, well, I like watercolors a lot. And there's also something called cyanotypes, which are um, sun prints. Mm -hmm. So you paint the surface with a light reactive chemical, and then you put objects on it, like leaves or ferns or other things. And we the had, sun we had, turns blue on the it, outside. It turns blue on the outside? Yeah. We had an artist on yesterday, and she, she keeps saying that she was using something called nitric acid. Okay. What is that? I'm still not sure. Do you ever no, use that? Not that. She makes books. Okay. She uses it to, I guess, to firm up the books. What is your favorite thing to do with your art? Uh, flowers or scenery? What do you do? I love ferns, and I also like bicycle gears because my boyfriend works at a bicycle shop, so I have oodles of different gears of different shapes and sizes. Bicycle gears. Yeah. Now you could do photography for that, right? Yep. Yep. You can take pictures of bicycle gears, but I like them with cyanotypes because then I can cast the shadows and do multiple layers of them. So how long has the um, Book Lovers Gourmet and Webster, how long have they been doing an art exhibit through the years? Is this their first one? No, nope, they've no. done many uh, years of it. We started three years ago with the cyanotype exhibit, and then last year we did the sunflowers, and this year we're doing sunflowers again. So explain again, what is the cyanotype? Cyanotype is when you take a chemical that reacts with the light. Mm -hmm. So you paint it on, I do t-shirts for my boyfriend's band, and we can do pillowcases and all sorts of different things. And I did a dress one time. So you paint it, let's say it's a dress. You paint the dress with the cyanotype liquid. So now the fabric is reactive to the sun. And if you put objects on it, like gears or ferns or something, they'll leave a shadow. So wherever you put a bicycle gear down, that will stay white. And the rest of it will turn blue because the sun was able to hit it. So where would you go to a, an art store to get yes, yeah. Cyanotype? How yeah. do you spell that? C-Y-A-N-O-T-Y-P-E. Cyanotype. So let's say if you covered a skirt or yeah. a dress, just, I mean, just brush it all on? Yeah. Okay, and it's a chemical. Mm -hmm. Then you put it in the sun. And if you, let's say you got a, uh, I don't know, uh, a stencil, right? Yeah. yeah. And put it right there. Mm -hmm. Now what's the next step to make it stick? Like It stick? doesn't have to stick, it just has to be flat on the surface so when the sun's shining, parts cast in shadow. Okay, how so long before it dries? About 15 minutes. That's it? I've actually got stuff on my back porch right now drying and then oh. I'll get home later and pull it all out before the thunderstorms come. So on a close, it's only like a few minutes? Yep. Well, that's right up my alley. I mean, that's a that's a style. Yep, you it's can, quick and easy. And then when you're done, you rinse it off in water, and that makes sure that you get all the extra chemicals off of it. Are there different colors of cyanotype? No, nope, it's always blue. If you can add like tea bags to make it browner, and you could add some chemicals to make it purpler, but it's some shade of blue brown. I've never heard of it. Has it been around a long time? It was the historic form of photography. So back before they didn't have our style of normal photography, we'll call it. Um, they did these, and that's how blueprints came about. Because in the old days, if they had to make multiple copies of an architectural drawing, they'd have to do each one by hand, and yeah. people would introduce errors. But if you drew it once on something that was transparent, you could put it down onto a piece of paper and get an exact duplicate of it with the cyanotech process. So that's how they started making blueprints, and that's why blueprints are blue now, because so, of that tradition. All right, so now Lisa is a well-known <laughs> local author, but she's also, this is all new to me, you're an artist. When did you get into art? Have you been in like, as long as you've been an author? Yeah, I've always enjoyed art. I, uh, Cyanotypes, the Worcester Art Museum, had an exhibit there a couple of years ago that was really 
uh, quite interesting, and that got me interested in the cyanotype process. I never did Verdun dummy. So, the Blackstone Varley Art Association, they've been around for a number of years, I think right? 57. Oh, I didn't think it was that long. Yeah, so I think we just were heading into our 61st year. And it's based in Uxbridge. Yes. So if somebody was interested in joining, where would they find them? BVAA.org. BVAA.org. Yeah. And can you just go, it's an exhibit. I know if you go right to the shop in Uxbridge, just you go right down the main street there. Yeah. It's on the right. Can, is it open certain times? Yeah, they're open weekdays 10 to 3, and on weekends usually 10 to 3. Now, getting better back to the Book Lovers Gourmet, this is a <laughs> really cute bookstore with other things in it, too, yep. up in Webster. So the art exhibit coming up, Lisa brought just an example. This is, she, you didn't do this one, no, but this no, is another cool. artist that's going to, well, this is oil, you said? No, I think that one's watercolor. That's in Webster. And it's a sunflower theme, yep. because out in front of the Book Lovers Gourmet shop, they have a bunch of sunflowers. Mm -hmm. Is that Deb Horan is the owner? She's terrific. Does she, yeah. does she plant that herself? Yeah. She yeah. did it? Yeah, and it's really pretty there. So oh. when we saw that when we were there for the cyanotype show, we knew what we had to do the next year. Yeah. And it's, it's a lot of fun to be inspired because everyone loves sunflowers. How many artists are going to participate in this? And this one should be 15 artists. 15? Yeah. When is it going to be from? Uh, the month of September. Okay, it was going to start pretty quick this yes. Saturday, right? Yep, we're dropping off Friday and Saturday. Okay, so is it too late for someone to sign up? Uh, it's only for BVAA members, and yes, we already did. We had to do a whole selection process to whittle down to the people that could fit in the show. Okay, so the art exhibit starts this Saturday, yep. and it'll be at the Book Clubbers Gourmet right on the main drag, Route 16, mm -hmm. in Webster. Yep. And what time will they be open? Uh, that I don't know, but it, I'm sure it's on their website. Yeah, are they open on Sunday? Do you know? I don't think so. Okay, so definitely they'd be there on Saturday. Mm -hmm. If I remember the store, it it's not large, but it packs a punch. Yep. They've got all different genres. Your books are all over there. Yep. Yep. How did you meet Deb Horn? Well, I think it was through the when we were looking for different places to put art up, and she was one of the places that was uh, making calls out to artists. She was, to, you know, I don't always associate it, but I'm glad I do now. Now, here comes the other part of Lisa, the part that I know better. You have coming out. You have just almost finished. The Sutton series, or did you finish it? Um, I've just about finished book six, and I'm about to start book seven on September 1st. Will there be more? Oh, yeah, that'll keep going. So that's the Sutton series I know that yep. I've been reading. Yeah, Murder Mysteries. What's the name of this one coming up? Um, the one that's coming out is Fur Fallacies, because we're on the letter F, and then next will be G, and I'm going to have to think up a G tree, because they're all tree names. So. Oh, who is that? Sue Grafton, who does that yep. author? Yeah. So, okay, so this will be fur fad fantasies? Fallacies. Fallacies. Oh, cool. Is that? All but, right. but then I have to find a G tree, like I said, and I'm yeah. not sure what G trees around here. A gum tree. I'll, I'll look it up on Google. Yeah, it's going to be a tree, right? <laughs> yes. It's going to be a tree. All right, now, knowing yourself, a medieval romance. This one is just about out. But that's book one in the series, and the one that's just about to come out will be book 15. So book 15 is not done yet. I'm on the last chapter that I'm writing right now. She's not busy. No. <laughs> I've got an itchy nose. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so this is 15. Right. So that's that's book one, but I'm oh, about yeah. to put out book 15. All right. This is book one because I keep thinking she's got so many out there. How, well, how many more will there be? That, that will keep going, too. That will keep going? Yeah. You do a chapter a day. Um, on those, I don't. On those, because they're set in medieval times, so I don't have to worry about current weather or politics or all that other kind of stuff that I put into the Sutton series. Yeah. So I tried to write one of those a year, but it's been two years since I wrote the last one, so I'm running behind on that series. You're running behind? <laughs> You're like way ahead. Oh my gosh. All right, so this was book one. Now this yeah. is a medieval fantasy, knowing yourself. All right. Yeah, so those are teen-friendly and they're uh, gentle romances, so there's nothing explicit gentle. in them. Now, this is something I hadn't seen either. Wyoming Vision, girl with a, um, this is this this is just a sample of what her cover will be like. Book one, yep, so Arapaho uh, Indian, yep. Vision Quest. Yep. Are you um, into American Indian? I am. Very good. Yep. My uh, heritage traces to the Lumbee tribe, which is in North and South Carolina. Oh, so the Lumbee? Lumbee, yep. What is that? Um, how do you spell that? L-U-M-B-E-E. 
you know, I hadn't heard of that. Yep, there my, was smaller tribes. My son's father uh, is part Blackfoot. Mm -hmm. You know, they were up in Montana, but mm -hmm. like a lot of tribes, they got shoved up into Canada. Yep. Um, I think they were also known as one of the most vicious tribes. I'm oh. not sure of the Crow. And the, but you were down the other end. Yeah. Now, how, how much far removed are you from that, uh, generations-wise? Well, it's the 1800s, so it's, it's a oh. way back. On your mom or dad's side? My dad's side. Your dad's side. All right, Wyoming Vision, what is this the first one about? Well, that's a series of 10 books. So I just finished book 10, and because those are novellas, I normally don't make paperbacks for each book in the novella because they're pretty thin. So I wait until I get 10 of them together, sort of like the Black Cat series where yeah. I waited until I got enough of them together to make the paperback. So this will be... So that will finally be out on paperback now that book 10 is out because I can get books 1 to 10 all together into a paperback. Form. All right, this will be individual. Yep, so those were individual ebooks, mm -hmm. and now there'll be a, a full all set in the paperback. And there'll be 10 stories in it? Yes. When yes. will that be out? <laughs> um, that's ready to go out, so probably this weekend. And you, you, use, you use Create Space, right? Yes. You, the type, I love the cover of the uh, the picture of the Indian Lake girl mm -hmm. with the uh, bow and arrow. Did you pick that? Yeah, yeah, I designed my own covers. What made you think of that Wyoming vision? Well, there was a series called Longmire on TV that was set in the same sort of area, and it, it went into a lot of the conflicts that happened between the natives who were on the reservation and the whites that had come in. And yeah. I really liked that kind of storyline, so I just said I was going to write one but with a stronger female lead, because I tend to write stories with female leads rather than male leads. Always something new with you. <laughs> I don't know what to, I'm almost speechless. Now, <clears throat> you do a chapter a day, <clears throat> usually. Yeah. How long does it take you to do the chapter? About an hour. What? An well, hour? That's I all? I type quickly, so. Well, I type, but gosh. Mm -hmm. Do you just go, you don't even correct, you just go as thoughts come in your mind, then correct later? Yes, yes. I always recommend edit later on because you want to get everything down while you've got it fresh in your mind. Yeah, like don't worry if you haven't put the punctuation in the right place. Just mm -hmm. get, get your ideas out, right? Right, right. And just, if you're driving in the car, do you often come up with things and have to pull over or whatever and write them down? I'll remember them, but yeah, that's what I'll do for the during the day. I'll be thinking of what's going to happen during that day that I'm going to write about, and then at the end of the day, I'll have all the thoughts and processes everything and everything down. set, and then I can just sit there and type it out for the hour. Lisa, do you have a job other than this? <laughs> I run websites, so I have my own sites that I run. I've okay. got uh, Bella Online. It used to be the second largest women's site in the world. Yeah. And we've got 300 editors who write for us on quilting and birding and all sorts of different topics. So you get to meet a lot of people. Yeah. Online or in person? Mostly online. So where are you going to be appearing? Are you going to be appearing next, or have you stopped doing that and you're going to stick strictly online? Oh, well, we've got Indie Author Days coming up in October. That's a nationwide library event that supports local authors in all the different libraries. So the Sutton Library will have a Indie Author Day yeah. extravaganza. You'll be there. Yeah. And it's going to be when? Uh, October 13th. October 13th. I wonder if that's a Saturday. Yeah, it should be a Saturday. October 13th. Well, it, it is a Saturday, and I think it's October 13th. Okay, Sutton Library, yes. October 13th, and they're going to, it's called Indie. Indie, indie authors? Why do they call it Indie? Well, independent is what Indie stands for. Okay, how many authors will be there? Well, we should have 12 at ours, but a lot of the other local libraries will be doing it too, and they'll all have different events for the different local authors oh, in so their area. All over the lot, Graf, yes. and everything. I didn't know that. Do they yeah. do this every year? This is the third year that they've had it. I wonder if Milford does it. They're pretty interested in authors, well, too. That could be. Yeah, Northboro, mm -hmm. all the different ones. Millbury? Well, could be. Do, yeah. I don't even know if uh, Millbury has authors come there. I don't know if I see anything about that. Well, I just finished up a four-part publishing series at the Millbury Library. So I know there's a lot of authors there. Yeah. You know, we talked about you know how to get published, how to get the book done, what different types of publishers are there, and how to do marketing. So there are a lot of authors in the Millbury area. They're, yeah, and they're working on it, but I haven't ever seen an announcement that they're going to have like an event, like uh, three authors at the table, and they all talk. It was like Milford does that. There was an FBI guy, or real, he sat right there. He had uh, a wonderful book. He did it by himself in mm -hmm. Milford. He talked to the, the audience. They've had other ones with three, a 3B. Three They'll have three different authors. I like it. It's kind of fun. Hopedale is big for that, too. Oh, great. They're very, very good. What's your favorite library? Is, is it Sutton, or is it somewhere else around? Well, I have to say Sutton, because I'm in Sutton, yeah. but they, the town voted down the library expansion, and we only have this little tiny book closet of a library right now, and it, we can't even fit our writing group into the 
meeting hall where we were supposed to have the writing group. So, so where do you meet? It, well, we meet in there just all stuffed in together. Yeah. So it would be nice if we had a larger library that we could do all sorts of events at. Yeah, I mean, Sutton, that, gosh, if, when my son was little, I mean, I remember it being small and it almost like attached to the same one as the police, yep. the fire and police. Yep, next to the fire and station. And it's little. And yep. you go in and there's the children's section and then over there, they do well with the space they have, yes. but they do need more space. Yes, yes, they absolutely need more space. You think there's space. any chance they might get it? Well, we'll have to try again in a couple of years when funding yeah. comes back around again. A grant, mm -hmm. maybe a grant. Um, it's fun. Every library has their own atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And different libraries dis you know, display different books different ways. Mm -hmm. The Have you been to the new Hopkinton one? They, yep. oh, they whoa, they really redid that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Shrewsbury? Mm -hmm. They redid. I yeah, know, I've been to Shrewsbury. Did you like it? Yeah, you did. Um, they've got that thing where, I'm not crazy about it, that you can check out electronically and check in. Mm -hmm. You should have seen the line of people who didn't want to do that. <laughs> and they were waiting for the person to right. do it for them. I think it's going to take a while to catch on. They're trying this up in Westboro, but you can see people going, no. <laughs> they put it over to the person. Right. Do you like it or does it bother you either way? No, it's fine. Yeah. They have it at the Worcester Library. We, we do art exhibits at the Worcester that's Library, right. and that's, it's just nice and easy. So if there's a long line for the person, you can just get out and yeah. you'll go on with your life. That's where I first heard about it. I got there. Well, first of all, the parking at Worcester Library has changed. Mm -hmm. You don't have a meter to keep it simple. Now you got to figure out how to use that, right? Yeah. And you get in, and then I was told, oh, no, 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 we don't handle checking your books out. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. There's a machine over there. And immediately my radar goes up like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, I don't want to do that. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. they, it they have a cafe over there, right? Yep. They've there? got a cafe and they've got a great uh, space for art exhibits there, too. We do an art poetry show there every year. Is it the Banks Room and the one opposite? For the art? For anything, those big presentations. Oh, no, no, they put the art out in the actual center of the walking area. Oh, yeah. So they, there's a yeah. bunch of glass cases in there. Down near the children's area. Yeah. Heading that way. Yeah. And do you ever give presentations, uh, you know, one of those big rooms there on the side? I've been part of an author exhibit in one of those, Yeah. but mostly we, we do the art there. Yeah. All right, so now we're talking with Lisa Shea. Many of you may remember Lisa. She's an author locally. She's written a lot of great books regarding Sutton mysteries. Yeah. Mysteries. Now, as if you haven't got enough on it, you've got mm -hmm. another section coming out, Wyoming Vision, which will have a lot of different stories in it, mm -hmm. right? This is the first. That'll come out separately. It's like an intro. Then you're going to have one bigger book mm -hmm. with all the different stories in it. Yep. Wow. It, oh. And now this one is done, yep. knowing yourself, and this is a medieval romance. Yep. This is already ready to go. Mm -hmm. And have they have the copies reached you yet to get out there? Well, uh, the, for the first one, yes, and then book 15 will be done shortly, and then that will one come out, so probably a month. I know you have ideas. What other kinds of books do you want to do? Well, I've got... 31 concurrent series right now, so it's just a matter of working on the ends of all of them, because I've got a Pixie series set in Whitensville, yeah. I've got another mystery series set in Blackstone, I've got just bunches of different series, science fiction series, dystopian <laughs> series, so... That's a lot. Now, we're getting back to the um, Blackstone Valley Art Association exhibit over in Webster at the Book Lovers Gourmet, right there in the main drag, Route 16. Mm -hmm. Now, you have some of your art up there, too, right? Yeah. Now, are yours also sunflowers? Yes, yes. For the sunflower show, we'll all have sunflower art in there. Is yours oil? I forgot. Is it oil or acrylic? Mine will be photography for this one. Oh, you can do the photography. Mm -hmm. Lisa, did you, I for, we've talked before, I think, about it, but did you go to college to learn the photography, or did you major? No, my, I went to college for leadership, which is um, interacting with people of different races and different backgrounds, because at Bella Online, the 300 editors I have are all around the world, so I'd be mm -hmm. dealing with people in China and India and South Africa and other places, so I wanted to do my best job of motivating all of them. What? Oh my gosh. You get to meet so many people. Yeah. The people that you've dealt with overseas, have they ever, have you ever actually met face to face? We went to England a couple times, and then the people from Europe and England all gathered together, so we had a lot of fun. Yeah. Lisa, people have questions, how would they reach you? Well, you can go to lisashea.com, so it's L-I-S-A-S-H-E-A.com. And if they have any other questions about joining up with the Blackstone Valley Art Association, would they contact you too? Sure, 
or they can go to they can just search on Blackstone Belly Art Association. We're on Facebook and Twitter, and we've got a web page, so we're all sorts of different places. So they welcome. I've been there to their little exhibit in their shop mm -hmm. there at Uxbridge. They have different many they different kind of artists. Yeah, I've seen the photography there. Mm -hmm. um, what other styles do they have? Oh, well, we've got oil painting, watercolor, acrylics, quilters, cyanotypers, drawers, um, illustrators. So all sorts of different styles in there. And we've got art shows rotating at the Uxbridge location. We're also in the Grafton Inn. We're at the Canal Restaurant in Worcester. We've got a little show at the Sutton Post Office. And we've got one at the Milford TV station. So we've, we've got art oh. in a bunch of different places that we rotate. OK. The Canal Restaurant, mm -hmm. isn't that the one in North Grafton? There could be one in North Grafton, but there's one in Worcester, downtown Worcester. Maybe I've got the wrong name. It's on Bridge Street. I think it was demoed, reconstructed recently. Okay. It was something else, but that name, when you said canal, mm -hmm. I thought, I wondered if it was... Do you ever get over to the um, uh, the post office pub? Yeah, my boyfriend plays there with his band. Oh, he does? Yeah. Maybe I've heard him in the background <laughs> somewhere. They put out a real... I could give him a plug. <laughs> Thanksgiving, they put out a terrific meal. Yes, yes. Have you eaten it? Have you gone over there? Yeah. With it? Oh, really, if you don't feel like cooking, <laughs> just make a reservation and go. Mm -hmm. Get there a little early. Yeah, I would say one thirty, two o'clock. Because they are so, oh, I really like them. So now you've been, you've got, you're over at the Milford Television Station. Mm -hmm. Where else now? Uh, Canal Restaurant. Yeah. The Grafton Inn. Um, the Sutton Post Office. We've got a show of just the Sutton people. At the Post Office. Yep. Now that's right off of Route One Forty Six. Yes. I didn't know they were allowed to have art. It's not for sale, so it's not a commercial thing, it's a decorative thing. And decorative. since we're all local Sutton artists, it's promoting local Sutton artwork. So you change it often? Yeah, try to go every month. What a great way to, do many of the artists say, gee, somebody liked my art and connected with me? Yep, the, one of the people at the Sutton Library is buying one of the local artists' works. So oh, I, There's so many places. To, have you heard of Arts Worcester? Yep, I belong to them. That's pretty, are they the one that does the, the street art every year? I don't think they're part of the street art. They have a, a place called the Aurora, and they have rotating shows there. You do. There is something. Start. Start on the street. Start yes. on the street. Yeah, that's I, coming I, up in September. Yeah, I visited that one year. Mm -hmm. Isn't it down in the south end? Yeah, that, that's a massive thing that has hundreds of artists in it. Yeah, you go on the main street or is it South Main? I, I forget which street. Well, it's is. heading, it's not far from uh, Clark University. Mm -hmm. That thing, as you said, that it was hot and it was massive, mm -hmm. but it is fun. Yeah. Start as small as an art in the street, mm -hmm. right? And everybody could they take they take everybody, don't they? Yes, yes. All sorts of artists, all sorts of different styles. Have you been in it? No. You weren't in it, but do you go? Yes. Really? You yeah. go whether or not you go, whether it's too hot or whatever. Oh yeah. It's just a lot of fun to see all the different art, you get inspired by them. I think that's great. Do you have any of them come to the one up here that's gonna be at the uh, Book Lovers Gourmet? Any of the artists from there? Yeah. Uh, the Book Lovers Gourmet is just for Blackstone Valley Artists Association. Okay, that's so. much. How about over at Tatnock? You know that big presentation room? Yeah. There's the uh, Art Association. I could have thought about doing that. They do. We've, okay. we've seen. My husband and I went to an art show there. One definitely, maybe two. Mm -hmm. But they're very open. All right. Uh, I noticed at Tatnock, they're pretty good. I mean, for they like the authors coming. Well, they know you're an author, mm -hmm. but also that would be another in for you because well, this is Lisa Shea, and I and also I'm the president of the, and they know, and that would be a great place to have a show. All right, I'll talk to them Definitely. about that. I hadn't yeah. realized that they had art in there. There's so. How about Providence? Do you get down there under Rhode Island at all? No, not usually, but we should do that more often because that is yeah. part of the Blackstone Valley. Technically, it runs from Worcester all the way down to Providence. Yeah, there's RISD, Rhode Island School of Design. Mm -hmm. I would think that would be fantastic to be down there. Okay. Oh, definitely. We are going to wrap it up at least so one more time. How can people reach you? Uh, LisaShea.com and Blackstone Valley Art Association is BVAA.org. BVAA.org. So on um, when now it's coming up starting Saturday over at the Book Lovers Gourmet up in Webster. Stick on Route 16 heading into Webster. Can't miss it. It's this cute bookstore. On the left there is a sign. Mm -hmm. And they got their sunflowers out front. You go in and you get to see an art exhibit, but you also get to enjoy the books in there. And what else has Deb got in there now? It's a little cafe. <clears throat> She's got coffee and tea. Yep. And cookies and things. Oh, cookies too. <laughs> you get Dunkin' and oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Lisa, thanks for being on. I expect to see you again. We've got this, yep. uh, we've got Wyoming Vision coming up. She never rests. <laughs> we'll see you next time with All you, right. I guess. Thank you.